Could there be some rule changes that hinder Lamar Jackson in his Baltimore Ravens offense? Well, let's take this first question that came from my guy, John. He said, what's good, bro? Let me ask you this. I haven't heard, unless I missed it. Anyone asks, do you think the NFL uh, is a certain group of players headlined by Lamar Jackson by taking away forward handoffs? This would mean RPOs, if I'm not mistaken, are now illegal. Are they trying to force players like him to become traditional quarterbacks? I get it. Our offense is now different under Todd Monken, but let's be realistic. As an offensive coordinator, you want to keep some of the successful things that your quarterback has done in previous years. I agree. Uh, I mean, this takes away from a lot of quarterbacks who look a certain way uh, because those quarterbacks can run faster and are more elusive than others. What are your thoughts on this rule change? Okay. Um, you, yeah, so they, they did make a rule where you can't – do a you can't hand the ball off um forward to a player past the line of scrimmage but that was i think that was already kind of a rule um behind the line of behind the line of scrimmage is fine but past the line of scrimmage is no good um they said it's going to be a foul and some other stuff and it's it gets a little confusing because i felt like it was kind of already a rule but now it's like i guess they really clamping down on it more uh just to try to make it clear it's, it's kind of confusing but this i don't think this eliminates the rpos because with the RPOs, like Lamar, he'll have the ball. He'll, he'll catch it from Tyler Linderbaum, and then he can put it to his side. He can put it to his side, or he can put it behind him or whatnot, or, or even right in front of him. But as long as it's behind the line of scrimmage, then they're good to go. They, they're good to go. So the RPOs, that, that shouldn't change um, anything with the RPO. I do see where you were getting at. Well, how some quarterbacks that, that can move, it, it could seem like the NFL was sort of trying to slow them down a bit to make it fair for everybody, for the quarterbacks who can't really move like that, more the statue types who say, hey, what about them? And they might be like, hey, we can't catch up with them. They're too fast. But, no, I, I don't think it's that. Um, because, yeah, it doesn't eliminate the RPO. It just adds some weird language to forward handoffs past the line of scrimmage. Uh, but basically, you you can't do that. But behind the line of scrimmage, you're good to go. So this shouldn't affect what the Ravens do, I don't think. Um, it, yeah, it shouldn't take away from any of that. Uh, and as far as Lamar Jackson, could them trying to make him a more traditional quarterback? I mean, Lamar Jackson is Lamar Jackson. Uh, he can do the traditional stuff. He can do the off script stuff. He can do the freestyles. He can do everything. He can do it all. That's what makes him so amazing as a quarterback and that was make it so amazing for us as fans when we watch him because with Lamar Jackson it's just crazy man like I know y'all y'all I'm sure y'all can remember any play off the top of your head where you thought oh man it's a wrap oh this this is about to be bad oh boy oh he about to get sacked it's about to end up bad and, and it, that happens but then that same play where we thinking that it was like whoa how did he do that and then we go crazy man Cause Lamar be going crazy, um, but no, nah, I, I don't think that the rule changes it is is tricky. But it will not eliminate the RPO. It will not eliminate Lamar from doing Lamar stuff. And then even on top of that, even if it was with the rule change that's that has been been implemented with the the forward handoffs and whatnot, um, it would also be on John Harbaugh. It would be on T. Martin. It will be on Todd Monk and it will be on everybody, all of Lamar Jackson's coaches to just get him and, and the running backs, get everybody up to speed on that. So when so when they're in, in the actual games, they don't get like they don't get side swiped anything by the rule because they will already know what not to do, what to do and what not to do, because they should have practiced that. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll be a thing that'll mess up their offense at all. Uh, and he said, appreciate the read, appreciate the channel. Hey, appreciate that, man. Thank you. He said, also tell the wife we appreciate a sacrifice, LOL, because you always make your videos, so you know that takes away, that takes time away from her. Oh, no, I appreciate that. And she, she's cool with it, of course, because we working, baby. It's work. This is work. But um, no, I appreciate that, too. And I'll make sure I, I let her know and call it, too. Rookie of the year. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, Hello, Engraver. So I did this with second and third year players, but as you know, we drafted one, two, three, four, five, six rookies this year, but only five can play. Which drafted rookie that can play might have a sneaky good year, or maybe you think an undrafted rookie will ball out. I know Zay Flowers will want to prove why he deserves that fully guaranteed contract. 
I mean, hey, he got it already. So um, him being a first round pick, him establishing himself throughout college, that that earned him that fully guaranteed first round contract. Um, but as far as rookie of the year, well, maybe not rookie of the year, but which which drafted rookie that can might I can't even talk right now. Which drafted rookie that can play might have a sneaky good year. Um, I, I think I will put Zay Flowers there. Reason being because he's a first-round pick. So he's going to be out there. Ravens are going to find a way to have him out there on the field. Todd Munkin, Ravens' new offensive coordinator. Um, he will hopefully got to prove it first or on the NFL level with the Baltimore Ravens, with this team. But it's expected that he's going to be – playing guys to their strengths a lot more uh, than the previous offensive coordinator did. Um, and it's important that while you play guys to their strengths, you also have guys complement each other's skill sets. So there are going to be times when Odell may be resting, when Rashad Bateman may be resting. And Zay Flowers going to be, oh, they resting? Okay, let me get in. Or he may be out there with them too. So you could do different things with Zay Flowers, but I think he, he would be the one that I would choose. Zay Flowers would be the one that I would choose for um to be not not maybe not necessarily rookie of the year. I don't think he'll get rookie of the year, but I do think he could have uh, a sneaky good year. Um, just based off of what I expect the Ravens to do, and I and I don't just expect them to use him as a traditional wide receiver or anything like that. I expect him to use him on like end rounds and stuff like that. Uh, have him catch passes out of the backfield. Have him in motion. Have him doing all type of stuff. I just expect them to use him as a weapon. Not, oh, not just a wide receiver, but a weapon. But I do not want them to Devin Duvernay him. To where Devin Duvernay, um, there were a lot of times where he, they only used him as a weapon and only had him on the jet sweep king. Y'all remember, Devin Duvernay was a jet sweep king. So, but with Zay Fly, I wouldn't expect them to do that, do that same strategy with him like they did with Devin Duvernay. On defense, sneaky good year. Um, I'm going to go with Caillou Blue Kelly. Reason being because the Ravens, as of right now, their slot cornerback spot, I mean, the cornerbacks after Marlon Humphrey and Rocky Yassine, it's up in the air right now. There's nobody who's a lock for that next up because you got Brandon's, well, they said Brandon's is going to be safety. You got Darius Washington. You got Kevon Seymour. You got... Uh, Daryl Worley, you got Jalen Alma Davis, you got Pepe Williams, you got Caillou Blue Kelly, um, you got uh, Trayvon Mullins. Um, you, so you, you got a lot of people there, but you have no clear lock for that, that num number three, that nickel cornerback spot. You ain't got no lock there. So the job is really up in there. Maybe Ravens got somebody who they want it to be. Maybe they got somebody who they eyeing, but it ain't nobody official yet. Yeah, your yeah, outside corners are there, but who's going to be that nickel corner? Who's going to be that slot corner? Who's going to be that inside guy? So I, I feel like that could be Caillou Blue Kelly if I had to choose one. Breakdown in Buffalo. Next question came from my guy, D3. He said, good day, engraving the team. Keep it clean. I hope all is well with everyone. Appreciate that. Now, do you believe that Diggs is disgruntled in Buffalo because Allen gets all of the accolades and recognition for their success? Even though Allen was just a gunslinger before Diggs got there. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's um, that's a really good question and a really good point, because yeah, before Stefan Diggs, and again, we we talked, we've been talking about this for years, how a significant wide receiver can change everything for a quarterback. It can change everything for them, like that, like that, right away. It's not necessarily a guarantee, but. The chances of that quarterback improving are more than likely, a lot more than likely. So anyway, with uh, Steph, I mean, with Josh Allen, yeah, there were so many question marks. Was he worth a first round pick? Is he even good? Wow, this guy he throws a lot of picks, and I mean, still he throws a lot of picks now too. But Josh Allen is nice now. But he got once he got Stephon Diggs, boy, it changed everything. It changed the the whole trajectory of his career once he got Diggs. That was his guy. That was his go. Is his go to? Excuse me. Not was. Well, <laughs> depending on how the rest of this offseason go, it could end up being it was. But Stephon Diggs is Josh Allen's guy, man. 
So and he changed everything for Josh Allen in a good way. He really helped bring the best out of Josh Allen. So could it that be why you upset? You ain't get enough credit for it. It could be because again, football players are sensitive. Because they, I mean, they're humans. They got emotions too. They feel a certain type of way too. We get it. Hey, it, it is what it is. I think it'll be more than that. I think he just will be. I think I think it's frustration off for uh, just how they've been coming up short. I think he's just tired of coming up short. Remember that video where he was just looking at the uh, the confetti. Was it for the Was it for the Chiefs? Was that the game? Then that was like what two three years ago. Then last year the playoff game, yelling at Josh Allen, going back and forth, and he he just probably just so tired, man. Because the Bills, they've been a team that they nice, they nice every year. They nice. They go win a playoff game and they advance, and then they just can't quite get over that hump. Now Ray, Ray, Raven certainly they they got to get over some humps themselves. But speaking about the Bills right now, they they it's like they get close, but then it's no cigar. It's like oh. So you gotta, they, you know, they going through it. And Stephon Diggs, like, hey, probably because he's from Maryland, he just want to win. That's it, and he get fed up. And sometimes just don't, no, can't hold it in. He like, hey, I gotta get this out. So they, they, I think it could be a number of things. But anyway, he said, remember Josh Allen's first playoff game against Houston? He said, trash. 24 for 46, 264 yards, and zero touchdowns. He was horrible. Yet Lamar's playoff record is the only one that is mentioned. Not even how Herbert lost a 27-point lead in the playoffs is mentioned, but I digress. Also, their defensive coordinator is taking the year off. So is it safe to say that Buffalo could be hit with the Madden curse this year? Not to me, I don't believe in no Madden curse and I like that. But um, I did forget about that. I think is that Leslie Frazier? That was, he said, I want a break. He probably tired of coming up short. He like, look, look, y'all, y'all, hey, y'all boys got it, man. Y'all boys got it. Sometimes I wonder when these people take these breaks. Uh, sometimes I be wondering if they're on the verge of getting let go, um, or yeah, cause but it's weird because he's taking a break from the bill. He didn't get fired, but then it reminds me of like Greg Roman. Greg Roman, he they they had the mutual parting of ways, um, but then he decided a- after a little bit after the interview too, because the interview with Washington. And he interviewed with Stanford, but didn't get to Stanford. But he has some interviews, but then he decided, all right, you know what? I'm going to just take a year off. I wonder if he's taking a year off. To really take a year off, be like, oh, you know what? I got to chill. I want to relax. Or he's taking a year off because it wasn't nothing popping. And, 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 hey, and people got pride. People, people have pride. Um, none of us want to look bad or anything like that. So it, could it be a pride thing? Or he's like, you know what? I don't, I don't want this to look like I couldn't get no job. You know what? I'm going to take a year off. I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But, hey, enjoy the year off. Spend that time relaxing. You get to watch the game stress-free instead of being right there in the booth on the sidelines and whatnot, going through all the drama and whatnot. And I'm sure they enjoy it. I'm sure they got it's like a love-hate type of thing if they're going to be watching from home now, watching from the crib. So, And they're still going to probably be invested. I'm sure Greg Roman's still going to watch all them Ravens games. Probably going to be booing Todd Monk and boo. But... <laughs> We're going to see, man. Anyway, he said, um, oh, again, thank you for your content and always uh, keep up the good fight. Hey, appreciate that, D3. This this is a fun question, man. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. Shout out to Graven.